Hi everyone, I'm Jane Applegath and welcome to the Epic Vision Zone. Our goal with this show and company is to bring you trailblazing women from around the world to share their ideas, their knowledge, resources, and inspiration to help you transform your dreams into epic success. At the intersection of Bob Proctor and Susie Orman with a little bit of Detroit sass thrown in the mix is today's epic female entrepreneur, Alini Anastos. Alini is a business strategist and prosperity coach who helps entrepreneurs and C-suite executives bust through money and mindset blocks so that they can create the income, the impact, and the lifestyle they deserve at any age. Along with expertise in business development, program coordination, personal development, education, and public speaking, Helini holds certifications in business, money, and life coaching, understanding that external results only come from internal change. She creates and implements assessments and training programs for business owners to increase income, client engagement, and improve morale. She has spoken on the national stage, has been featured on expert television and podcasts, radio shows, and streaming networks, sharing her money and mindset strategies. A featured author in the international bestseller, The Number One Habit, she has coming this summer a new book titled My Reinvented Life, a That Sky House publication that she has put a labor of love into, and we can't wait for the release. Welcome, Helene. How are you? It's so good to be here. Thank you so much for having me, Jane. So grateful to have you here. Before entrepreneurship, you were previously in the private funding industry and left because you said that there was no human connection. I found that very fascinating. Explain why that became the driving force to entrepreneurship. Yes. Well, I was affiliated with private funding groups and I would help small to medium business owners get money when the bank said no, doing things like accounts receivable financing, equipment leasing. While it was very gratifying to help business owners open their doors, or in some cases, keep their doors open, all too often I found that the funders, not all of them, but some of them, were so focused on just closing the deal that it didn't matter to them what else was going on with that business owner. And if you're an entrepreneur, you can't separate that out. It's your business, it's your life. They're so intertwined. And I cared about the person on a holistic level as well. And that was not as appreciated as I would have hoped in that sector. And I thought I can no longer help these people make money when they really don't have the client's best interest at heart first. I completely resonate with that. It definitely is a heart core strategy that you represent. And that was one of the reasons that I wanted to um, unpack that story because when it is just about the money, uh, mm -hmm. you're not really attracting that which will come to you naturally. And that's what right. our entrepreneurship platform is all about is all coming from the heart and helping each other. That being said, you have uh, a saying that you said gratitude first. You have a powerful gratitude first story. Share that with us. Yes, gratitude first always, even on days, well, there's the saying that is every day a good day? No, not necessarily, but is there good in every day? Yes. So I had already begun my coaching business, but I was admittedly in a slump. I was literally down to $11 and three cans of beans in the pantry. And I live on a peninsula. I'm on my car on the bridge coming home and my car starts breaking down literally just stalling out. I'd stop, put it in park, I'd get it started again. This happened six times on the bridge and I was starting to have a meltdown, really a little bit of a freak out. And I knew that if I didn't shift my focus, I was gonna be a hot mess, literally and figuratively, because I live in Florida. 
So I started saying, I'm so grateful for all of this traffic because it means people aren't going fast. No one's gonna rear end me. I'm so grateful I'm not driving on snow and ice, which isn't something we worry about in Florida anyway, but I kept shifting my focus to gratitude. And I made it off the bridge to the local gas station and left my car there. And the mechanic said, do you know what the issue is? I said, no, I left it there and I walked home. Now I had no idea what that was gonna cost me, but I am, dancing around my condo saying, I'm so grateful I'm alive. I'm grateful I had the physical ability to walk home. I'm grateful that I'm safe. Anything I could think of. The mechanics called and told me what the issue was and it was gonna be a little over $700. Now again, I had $11 and three cans of beans. And they said, do you want us to fix it? I said, yes, absolutely. Told them to fix it. I had no idea where the money was coming from. But again, I had already started my business and I just kept focusing on what I did have. Like, I'm grateful I have the ability to help people. I'm grateful I have a roof over my head. I'm grateful you know, for my positive attitude. And within one week, I had over $22,000 in commission come in. And I really believe if I didn't put my energy and focus on being grateful for what I already had, that that commission would not have come in. Unbelievable. Thank you for sharing that story. You told it to me earlier and I said, we have to let the audience in on that powerful story. Yes. It is so amazing when we shift our perspective and we shift yes. our attitude to gratitude, um, mm -hmm. the universe opens up and that took a lot of courage and it took a lot of yes. bravery to do that. So kudos to you, but how incredible that that fell into your lap. Well, maybe not, it didn't fall into your lap, but it came to you because you were in that state of gratitude. So yes. reinvent your money relationship. We'll just hop right into the reinvention mm -hmm. of your money relationship. As an entrepreneur, your next paycheck is never guaranteed. Mm -hmm. And this is often what stops people from taking the leap into doing their best work because they decide that they're going to stay with the constant paycheck at the job that they hate right. and not explore their passion. So how do we shift the narrative of lack into abundance so we can make that shift and walk into our passion? That's a great question because I'm sure as you well know, we both know, so many people are firmly ensconced in that comfort zone and they're not gonna step up to do what it takes to make it happen, to make that transition. Their risk seems far greater than whatever potential reward they could have, but you bring up abundance and lack and I think for most people, especially when they're fearful around money, they really are focused on the lack mentality, thinking there's never enough to go around. No one's gonna ever pay me what I'm worth. I'm not gonna be able to charge that. When the reality is we do live in an abundant universe, there is enough money to go around, but you have to be focused on your ability to get it and believe that regardless, whatever your industry is, regardless of how many coaches or consultants, whatever you do that are in your industry, nobody does it quite like you. Nobody does it just as you. So there is room for all of us. And when you shift the focus to abundance, knowing that the money is there, no, I'm not saying it's magically shows up in your bank account, not by any stretch but you have to believe that the money exists and then you strategize on how to bring that in to your own world. Right, absolutely, you take that action. What I love that you said earlier was that you want to believe that you are the cause and money is the effect. In other words, not the reverse, you don't allow money yes. to rule you because yes. that is, Yes, that's what happens to a lot of us is we allow that paycheck or that income to rule us and everything that we do in life from, you know, purchasing something that we'd like going on a trip or taking the leap to become an entrepreneur. So I, I yes. love the um, that 
shift of mindset. So do, uh, yeah. and speaking of that, uh, we, we sort of tapped on this just now. You said, do our beliefs affect our money relationship? So what do you believe about money will determine the results that you have in your life about money? A belief is a thought that you repeat so much that you believe it's true. So just that is so important because if we keep repeating the negative, what's mm -hmm. going to happen with our relationship with money? Yes. Well, and it also goes back to a little of the cause and effect where most people don't believe they're the cause where money is concerned. They think they're the effect. You know, and the reality is money didn't cause your car, my car to break down. Money didn't cause the pipes to burst. Money didn't cause the flat tire, whatever you need money for to fix. But when you put yourself in the position and believing that you are the cause, money is the effect, then you're wielding a whole new sense of power that can make all the difference in your finances. And if you believe, and most of us, you know, we all grew up with a money story, parents, grandparents, whoever we were around. And I believe that the majority of people had the best of intentions, but how many grew up believing there's never enough to go around, it's a limited supply, money's the root of all evil, no one's ever gonna charge, chart, or no one's ever gonna pay me what I'm worth. And subconsciously, we carry those beliefs with us into adulthood. But going back to cause and effect, it's also a good thing. I was talking to an entrepreneur who had his best two months. He hit it out of the park, he was stunned. I said, exactly what happened? Let's go back and look at it. And he's like, I'm not really sure. I said, you wanna own the fact that you're the cause so you can replicate it when you're bringing it in as well. So it's not about blame or shame, it's about putting yourself in the driver's seat. Mm, I love that. Put yourself in the driver's seat of your money. Yes, absolutely. Yes. So like you said earlier, <clears throat> money doesn't rule you, you're the driver. Right. That's so powerful. How can your money mindset directly impact your business? Uh, you told us a little bit there about that story and the client that you have, but difficulty in sales conversations or dealing with clients who owe you money, not just charging what you are worth, et cetera. That's something that all, I would think, 99% of the entrepreneurs out there struggle with. Right. I see a lot of people that are always looking for external processes first, external strategies. And while the marketing, the sales strategies are all very important, if you don't have your head wrapped around perfectly where money is concerned, it's not gonna matter. So to me, it has to be mindset first, mechanics second. Because you could have, for example, the latest and greatest school of sales. You know, They give you all the tips and tricks and the techniques. This is how you talk. This is how you, what you show them. This is how you close the deal. But if you're in the heat of the moment, right in the middle of say a very important sales call, it could be one of your biggest customers to date and the emotions start to take over, what's gonna rule? The strategy that you just learned in a workshop or your real deep-seated beliefs and mindset around money? It's always gonna be what you believe in your mindset around it. Absolutely, you start to fumble, you start to second guess, your value, yes. Uh, yes. whereas it, if you speak, if your mindset is that, that I'm worth this because I am valuable, it completely shifts your energy as well, which yes. we can all sense whether we believe it or not. But I absolutely, absolutely. agree. It is so vital. Um, that's why I love one of your titles is Prosperity Coach. Uh, and like you said, it starts from the inside. Uh, yes. So what does the phrase pass the salt have to do with the money mindset? And I share this with all of my clients. If you're at a dinner table out to eat and someone says, pass the salt, is there any emotional charge? Does anyone get upset? No, you just instinctively pass the salt. But when you have that conversation about money, there's almost always that emotional charge to it. 
for those people that haven't done the real mindset work and especially regarding the beliefs. So I want everyone to get to the point when they have to talk about money, whether it's confidently stating your fees in a sales conversation, whether it's having that courageous conversation with a client that owes you money, or whether it's talking to a family member about money, you have to take the emotional charge out of it and come in with the energy of it's just past the salt. Because again, you are in control. You're the cause. Money is the effect. So just pass the salt, keep your energy on an even keel. Mm, that's a great practice. So if you have that on the tip of your brain and someone starts to talk about money, especially when it's a spouse or a close relative, because those are the ones that usually trigger that kind of a conversation. Right. Take a moment, pass the salt and shift your perspective. Great way to practice. Oh my gosh. I, I, I love that because you just completely take out the emotion and just look at it for what it is. Yeah. Yes. Fabulous. I love it. That's a great tip. So share with us, share with us three tips to shift your money mindset besides past the salt. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, it really is important to connect to your money. So one of the things I ask clients to do is to keep track of the money coming in. You know, be success focused, be abundant focused. It's about what's coming in. And you can do this electronically. You could even do it in a notebook where you literally write down every day the amount of money that comes to you. It could be found money on the ground. It could be the commission check, a paycheck, it could be a gift certificate. It doesn't matter. And the source of it doesn't matter. It's that you want to put the energy on what's coming in because we all know energy flows where our attention goes. And then also schedule a money date at least twice a month. Weekly is better if you can do that. And I'm not talking about spending hours on this, but it can be 15 minutes, 20 minutes, maybe even a half hour where you look at all of your major accounts. You have to know your numbers and take the stigma away of, I don't wanna deal with that. I don't wanna look at my credit card statements. I don't wanna see my bank statements. If you keep avoiding it, the money has the power over you. You don't have the power over it. So schedule money dates into your calendar. And normally, like when you're dating a human, usually you look forward to dates. So get yourself in the frame of mind that, yay, I know my numbers, I'm looking at my money. And the balance doesn't even matter. The bottom line doesn't matter in the beginning. It's that you're cultivating the relationship. And I say this to clients is in regarding the tracking and the money dates. I said, if you want a rich and rewarding relationship with your spouse, with kids, with clients, don't you have to pay attention to them so how can you expect to have this rich and rewarding relationship with money if you're too afraid to pay attention to it? Mm. And third thing I that, suggest- Sorry, that's people, fabulous insight. Go ahead. The third suggestion I have for people is to stair-step their way with money goals. You wanna make six figures, seven figures, whatever it is to you. It may be 50,000, it could be 50 million. I wanna make sure it's your goal but I also advise people to stair-step their way because for example, I worked with somebody that was averaging about 75,000 a year and he said, I wanna make a million dollars. I wanna to go to seven figures. Great, we will strategize, we'll get the plan together, we'll help you get there. And it's good to have those goals, but then we broke it down into increments. Like, what do you wanna make next month? What do you wanna make in the first quarter? And then you can increase that whether about 25% as you go along. Because if you have are so focused on the seven figures and the most you've ever made is 75,000 a year, that first bump in the road is gonna overwhelm you and you'll sink back to, oh, why bother? It's too far out of reach. So stair-step your way to that big money goal so it never seems like it's too far out of reach and you'll wanna keep your head in the game. Those are great tips. I love the the money date, especially all I could envision was sitting down with a glass of wine, 
make a, a little event out of it. <laughs> uh, my mind just went to that because you may need the wine if you're looking at your accounts. But <laughs> needless to say, I get the point because it's you're 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 trying you're working to reduce the habit of letting it trigger you is what you're doing. Yes. So exactly. you become you become comfortable with your money, and I love the insight that you said. Um, if you want to attract your ideal customer, you know, do you ignore them? No. Well, if you want to be rich and abundant with your money uh, and be friends with it, you don't want to ignore it. Um, that is just such, it, it's, it's, it's a completely different way of looking at money. I love it. I think it's, it's so uh, not just insightful, but very clever too. So uh, have some fun with it. <laughs> I mean, you know, if that's what it's going to take, why not? <laughs> Absolutely. So thank you. Those are great tips. I love it. Now you have been called the money goddess. Tell us about that title and why you've been nicknamed that. A client that I had a few years ago, so I never called myself the money goddess before that. He bestowed that title on me because he came to me. It was about sales. It was about issues he was having with partners in his business. But at the root of it, I was hearing his money story. I was hearing what he wasn't saying, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. And we ended up unpacking from childhood the beliefs that he had, because how you do anything is how you do everything. So if you have that angst or you have that avoidance around money, then I guarantee you, you're avoiding something else in your life that could be very significant as well. So when you come from a place of empowerment, then a lot of other things fall into place. And he said I was a money goddess because I was able to cut through the BS and help him rewrite his money story. That is so great. I love that title. I mean, it, 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 it conjures up a lot of different visuals and um, certainly something that I would want to find out about if you're the money goddess, you know, uh, yeah, that is a fabulous title and obviously very fitting. Be a purposeful creator. That is something that you told me earlier and you have a very powerful book coming out. Tell us about the story behind your book and why the title. Yes. Well, the title of my book is My Reinvented Life. Many years ago, I experienced a traumatic event that turned my world upside down. The life that I had created up to that point ceased to exist. I was in a world of hurt. I had never experienced anything like that. I was devastated, hurt, frustrated. And I was also dealing with PTSD. And there often were days that I didn't know how I was gonna make it through tomorrow or the next week month, let alone the next year or the rest of my life. And even though I made it through that event, I found work afterwards, but I was at a point where I was no longer okay with being okay. I was grateful that I had steady income, but I would futurize and I would look at the next five years, 10 years, and I couldn't get fired up about my future. Again, I was surviving but I wasn't thriving. I wanted to thrive again. I wanted to blossom again. So I knew that I had to purposefully create my life going forward. I believe that we're always creating our lives, but to be purposeful about it, because sometimes people create their lives in a negative direction and they don't even realize it. So I was uber focused. I'm purposefully creating my life in a positive direction and started my own business in my fifties. And I want to inspire people that regardless of what they've been through, however traumatic, and sometimes it's even small, seemingly insignificant events that could be the catalyst that regardless of age or circumstance, you can begin again. Yeah, so inspiring. Uh, I can't wait for that book to come out. I love the cover. Uh, and it's really going to have a very powerful story um, that we talked about earlier. So be sure and keep your eyes peeled for the book and which we will have, <clears throat> excuse me, a link 
uh, and we will give you a heads up when her book is released the, later on this summer. And now you have a metaphor that you spoke about, crabs in a bucket. And I loved the story. Just tell our, our audience a little bit about the crabs in a bucket. I love using that metaphor. Too often, you know, people get excited about something and they start sharing it and other people start poking holes in their dreams. Oh, you're too old. It's too hard to start a business. You're never going to make any money doing that. And I believe we should be as protective of our dreams like we would of anything that has tremendous value for us. And you may see, picturing the crabs in a bucket, you may see there's a way out of this. I can change my life. So you start to climb out of that bucket. But those people closest to you might think, no, it's not worth it. Let's stay in our comfort zone. So instead of climbing out with you and exploring possibilities, they glom onto you and pull you back down. So all the crabs stay in a bucket. Now, they don't have to agree or even believe in your mission of what you want to do with the rest of your life. But don't let them rent space in your head. Don't let them pull you back down in that bucket. <laughs> I love that metaphor. Don't be the crab in the bucket. <laughs> Just right. take climb the out. Keep climbing. I know. I love it. So, if you're in a situation where you feel that tug, where you feel that those people renting space in your head, as you say, which is fabulous, mm -hmm. just think of the crab and grab onto that edge and pull yourself out. You know, and yes. that's that's just go for it. Why did you choose the diamond as your logo? I love the idea of the diamond. And it was actually one of my, my best friends because I was ruminating over some type of symbol when I branded under my own name. And she immediately said, oh my goodness, you're a diamond. And then she stopped talking. And I immediately said, strongest gemstone, multifaceted. And most importantly, at least to me, shines its brightest after being put through tremendous pressure. So to me, that's that's a theme for my life. It's the theme for my book. Whatever you've been through, you can still shine brightly if you give yourself the chance. Right. It's the perfect logo. Um, and the, the meaning behind it is just absolutely perfect. Do you have any last words that you'd like to share with our audience? To not let others dictate their future. To again, I want to see people stepping into their own power. I want to see people living a life by design, by their choice. Because at the end of the day, it, it, it's your dreams, it's your vision. And ideally, those closest to you will be supportive of that. But again, don't let other people run space in your head. Don't let them pull you back down in the bucket if you know that you want something different because you have the right, and I'll, I want everyone to believe they have the right to be as happy as they wanna be. So step into your power, own it, embrace it. Yeah, absolutely. Now I have a, one last question for you because we're here on the Epic Vision Zone. If your life were an epic story, what would the title be? Oh, my first thought was surviving to thriving. But I also go back to, you know, the, the diamond. That the strength, you know, the being shine, being able to shine the brightest after you've been through the muck. So Go from surviving to thriving, embrace the pain and keep moving forward. Yeah, that, that says it all, doesn't it? Shine, shine, always shine under pressure. <laughs> yes, <laughs> for yes. sure. Absolutely. So share with our audience your, your offer that's going to be available. Yes, I am putting together the the money tracking that I'd spoke of, the connecting to your money, 
and it is about recording. Again, you can do this electronically. It'll be sent to you. And I also have some tips and guidelines and also a couple ideas of how you can make a game out of it. Because mm. I've had clients say, I'm not, I'm not putting that down. I'm not going to be looking at my money every day. I'm sure as hell not going to put down the zero if nothing comes yeah. in. You absolutely have to put the zero down because if you don't, it's back to money controlling you, you not controlling it. So I give a lot of support and guidance on how to move through that. So they'll get um, all, the, all the information they need with that. And again, it takes three seconds a day. I'm not asking people to change their life. I just want them to change their mindset, pay attention, connect to your money. Yes, I love that you say you've got it put in such a way that it's it makes it more fun. Uh, yes. Because that is, yeah, if, if we could make a game out of it or look at it as, as something that you look forward to doing, uh, it really does help shift your mindset towards uh, your, your money and or lack of it because you don't want the zero to trigger a negative feeling. So therein right. lies the rub, right? Because if that happens, right. then you know that money's ruling you ex instead of the reverse. So you could see the yeah. zero and go, oh yeah, it's just a big fat donut. I think I'll go have one, <laughs> whatever, right. Right? Yeah. Right. but the, all of that information will be on Alini's page in our summit directory. So be sure to go and check that out. Also all of her contact information, um, her website, get a healthy relationship with your money. Uh, it's definitely something that all entrepreneurs need to do. And we don't want it to be so overwhelming us that we don't even move forward in 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 the purpose that we have here and uh, our great vision that we're here to create um so i encourage all of you to go to the summit directory pull up alini's information and be sure and con contact her and touch base with her and connect with her on social media and be sure to follow me on instagram at jane applegath and check out how you can become an epic entrepreneur at janeapplegath.com. This is the Epic Vision Zone, transforming your dreams into epic success. Congratulations for signing up for the Female Entrepreneur Revolution. We're bringing you some of the most exciting female entrepreneurs from around the globe to share with you their knowledge, their ideas, their inspiration, and more importantly, their resources to elevate you to prosperity and freedom. And by being here, you're on the cusp of something great, your epic future. I'm Jane Applegath, founder of the Epic Vision Zone and producer of the Female Entrepreneur Revolution. Be sure to get your VIP pass and join me after the summit on June 16th for a very special VIP coaching session where we'll have hot seating, summit Q&A, and a special guest appearance by one of our speakers just for you, where we'll ignite your vision, up-level your confidence, and set you on the path to your dream's epic success. This is your opportunity calling. It's time to take action. Get your VIP pass now. I can't wait to see you on the other side.